A song of ascents. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Praise the Lord. There is love 
that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again, victorious. Good morning, Union Church. My name is Sam, and I want to welcome you to the Union Church of Rio de Janeiro. We're a Bible-based international church. We're really an oasis for English speakers living in Rio, but we're also a launch pad of hope to those, to the nations. So I want to welcome you this morning. We have much to celebrate this morning. Uh, last night was an amazing celebration of Pastor Rodrigo. We can call him Pastor Rodrigo now. Reverend Rodrigo, give him a hand. 
<clears throat> if you haven't had a chance, go up and give them a hug or a, since it's COVID, maybe a fist bump. Um, but that was an amazing service and a celebration of God's work in and through Rodrigo. So we're just celebrating with him. Uh, we also have the second week of Advent to this week preparation. We're going to have a few ladies come up in a little bit to light the candles and uh, re do a reading. So we're excited for that. Another reason to celebrate the coming of Jesus. And then we have baptisms today. We have four people being baptized. We have Joachim, Merricks. Joy and Jazar, uh, we just want to celebrate with them God's work in their life. We also, the last call, where's Carol? I'm going to ask her to come up here. Yes, Carol. Today is the last call for the angel tree. And I want you to give a plea for the children. <laughs> I needn't plea. I am only very, very grateful because we have achieved our goal. And that is 73 children have been blessed. Thank you very much. I just want to honor Bruna. Come here, Bruna, Natasha. If it weren't, I needed the help of these two ladies. And uh, Bruna was the one who did all them angels. Natasha is much more organized than I am, so she has the list of every donation, who paid, when they paid, and where it went to. <laughs> uh, you see angels hanging on the tree there. That's not because they weren't considered. It's only because people have made a donation online and haven't actually acquired the physical angel. But I just want to thank you all very, very much. You are blessed. Now I'm going to invite back up Bruna, Natasha, and Joy for our reading of the Advent uh, preparation. The second Sunday in Advent is preparation. Waiting is hard in a fast-paced society. We want the stoplights to change quickly, the grocery line to move fast, and Christmas morning to arrive soon. We forget that before good things happen, preparations must be made. What do you do to prepare for Christmas? How are your preparations coming along? Last week we lit the hope candle and remember those who first spoke the promise of a coming Christ child. Isaiah told Judah, go up on the mountain and announce the good news. Your God is coming soon. The second candle of the Advent wreath is called the Bethlehem candle. It is a symbol of the preparations being made to receive and cradle the Christ child. In the Old Testament times, the people would level the earth and create an elevated highway to prepare the way for a coming king. In Matthew 3, 1, 2, 3, we read, in those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of the calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Let's pray. Dear God, as the kings and the rulers of our world are enthroned, we have witnessed the elaborate preparations made for those events. By the power of your spirit, move us to make the preparations needed to welcome you, King of kings and the Lord of lords. For Jesus' sake, amen. You In the desert place, through the wall 
Well, we have a full service as Sam uh, shared. This is a service of celebration. Really, we're coming down to uh, the end of the year, and we have another special service next week. But uh, today we have uh, so much celebration, and our number one goal in all that we do in our worship service here is to honor and exalt and worship the na Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? So this is our number one priority. Can you hear me all right? Can we get the volume up a little bit? I think with the fans uh, in the back, the sound isn't carrying so well. Last night we had a very special service. And it was the public ordination service celebration of now Reverend Rodrigo, Reverendo Rodrigo, Rodrigo Reverendo. Pastor Rodrigo. And what we'd like to do now is just call up uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, Hosanna, Joaquin, would you come on up? And just, I think, I hope the camera can follow us. We have some guidelines here, but uh, come on up here. I'd like the elders to come up here. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we really don't need a paper certificate. We don't need it because the testimony of someone who is ordained is a testimony of his life, testimony of his family, life in Christ and his and his doctrine, the way he lives out the scriptures. But we put it on paper so that it's legal before the state and it's recognizable. Rodrigo de Santos Calado, you have demonstrated that you are well qualified for the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ as evidenced by your gifts, seminary training, and after satisfactory examination by we the undersigned and the leadership of the Union Church of Rio de Janeiro in regard to your Christian experience call to ministry and views of biblical doctrine was on December 5th 2020 you were ordained our brother was ordained into the pastoral ministry publicly appointed and ordained by the prayer and laying on of hands here at the Union Church of Rio de Janeiro to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we wanted to once again just recognize you this morning and your family. It was um, Jailson who said you're probably not going to see a big difference in the role because what he did as volunteer and, and leader he will continue to do but as recognized pastor that we the leadership board the church he, his family, we have all recognized this call on his life to serve in a pastoral role, shepherding the flock, building up the body of Christ so that in the time and planning of God, Christ, his body, can attain to the full measure of Christ himself. And so, once again, we just like to pray with you and recognize you in this wonderful call and your wonderful ministry to us here at the Union Church. Come on up. You want to come up, guys? Yeah, you guys can come on up. Our leadership team, Pastor George, was with us by uh, video last night. We had uh, Rodrigo and Hosanna's sending pastor from Sao Paulo here with us to give testimony and word. It was, it was really quite remarkable. And again, it, it really honored the Lord Jesus Christ and it honored this a wonderful family. Lord, again, we thank you for uh, Rodrigo, Hosanna, Joaquin. We thank you for their service to you. We thank you that their crown in this life is the knowledge, all surpassing knowledge of Jesus. Nothing compares to this, knowing you. And Lord, how you have set him apart to serve and lead your local church, to be a shepherd. Bless him in this continued role, O oh Lord. 
For your namesake, for your glory, we pray. Amen. Um, Hosanna, you and Joachim can sit, but I need the elders to stay here. And we're going to recognize another family. I would like Marc Antonio, Dr. Calonina, Luisa to come forward. Just last week, we were celebrating new members, and they were part of that process. Come right here, please, in front. And um, it was in this process, they've been waiting for years to go to England. And a way to do that, um, Marc Antonio, he is uh, also uh, now a resident of Portugal through his, I believe, his grandfather or a relative there. And his documentation, after years of waiting, came through. <laughs> so they're like, oh my goodness, is it like, kind of one in, once, not in a lifetime, but it's very rare, he had to go get his documentation and they have uh, an open door in England to um, start life there. But they said, we really want to go as members. We've been here for three years. And so can you send us out as, as members? And so we let them complete that process. And one of the beautiful things about that here, you can stand in front of these guys. You guys are the, the focus here. Yeah, these guys are going to lay their hands on you. One of the distinctions of an international church is that we know we have people coming and going all the time. They're internationals. They're coming. They're here for two or three years. And so our goal is to receive all as an oasis because we speak English and it's easy for people to come. And Brazilians who speak English can help us reach that goal of those who are away from their home so that we might present Christ to them, that they might have a place to worship, follow Jesus, become like Jesus. But many people go after two or three years to another assignment, to another country. And so it's with this that we received you, not that we could just say goodbye one week later, that doesn't make sense, but that we could send you. Because our mission is to receive like an oasis, a oasis in igreja, but we don't stay there as an oasis. Then we send like a launch pad, a rocket, platform that you forget, with the hope of Christ to wherever you go. And now you're going to Portugal, you're going to England. And I had a local church ask me from the United States, but pastor, missionary, you know, do you give them a certificate? How are they missionaries? How do you send them? And I said, while they're with us, we try to give them a mindset, a worldview of what it means to be a Christ follower here and there. And if you can keep straight these four B's, not so hard. If you go with the mindset to bless in the name of Jesus, preaching the gospel through word, works, and wonder. Don't think of yourself, but think of blessing those. If you think about belonging, you belong to Christ, invite others to belong to your household. You need to belong to a local church. You need to belong to a community of believers. And as people see and hear the word, invite them to believe. Believe in the rock, Jesus, who is here, he's there, he is everywhere. And the written word of Jesus and the prophets and the apostles, the word of God, the truth. We believe in Christ, we believe in his word. And that you are gracious with one another and with the church that you'll be going to, very gracious, forgiving one another in the name of Christ that we might become like Christ. And though we grow older and our outer beauty fades, because we bless, belong, and we believe, we become like Jesus. And as we gaze on Him, and that was the word last night, as we take time to fix our eyes on Jesus, People see, you guys look like Jesus to one another. So we, we commission you this day like a launch pad. We're sending you to represent Union Church well, to represent Jesus well by blessing, belonging, believing, and becoming where you go in your next. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
Pastor Rodrigo, would you pray for this family? Dear God, you know that in our hearts is a mis mixed feeling that we are loving this family and we want them with us. But we also understand that you have your plans and we send them and we ask you that you use their lives to worship your name. That everything that they do there, people could look at them and see you. And the ones that don't know you will look at them and say, wow, they are different. And give them the courage, the opportunity, and that they can realize the situations that you will put them to share about you, to bring people closer to you. We ask that you provide for all their needs, provide a good church, a good place for them to grow with you, to adore you, to have other brothers and sisters and join them we ask for the job for the opportunities that you will give for the studies for everything that they are going to do there that they will be a blessing in jesus name amen well wonderful i told rodrigo uh, leading worship i said brother you and I, as we conduct this service, we're going to have to deep breathe. Paulo, you're going to have to deep breathe because today is a little bit longer service, but we want to honor each one in their time because as we honor each of these families, as we think about preparing our hearts for the Christmas season and the first Advent when Jesus came, and we're going to celebrate that Advent here at the communion table, we have a lot to do. These baptisms, today we're a little more like a Brazilian church. We've had a couple of these special services. I, I say, how do we know when it's been a good service? How do, we, how do you know if it's a good church service or not? What do you judge by? And I said, well, first and most important to our elders is that did the service exalt the name of Jesus? Did we worship Christ? Because we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have anything. Did it worship Christ? Was the preaching of the word, was it biblical? Was it focused on the foundation of the word of Christ, the prophets and the apostles? Was it orderly? And was it timely? Well, three out of four ain't bad, right? <laughs> so, here we go. We're um, looking at our series. We started this Ephesians series, the death of this great divide. And we're defining more and more what that divide is. Our countries are divided. The world's divided. People want unification. They, they search for hope. They put their hope in many things, but there seems to be more and more chaos, more and more division, more and more finger paint pointing. And I told my wife, I told her this morning, I said, there's one more thing you have to do as a pastor's wife today. And she said, I hate when you say there's one more thing you have to do. <laughs> and I said, there's three things we should never say in our home. And we're going to put this on our refrigerator. When you point and say you, you have three fingers pointing back to you, right? <laughs> we should never say you have to do, you know. What my wife does is it's... it's Few people can manage the things she manages. <laughs> Sorry for saying one more thing you have to do. Now, you always, you never, those three you statements we got to, those create the great divide of hostility, right? The great divide. Last week we looked at this here. It's better to belong to the blessed, those who are blessed to the glory of God, than to hope in any other thing. 
So Ephesians 1 is all about spiritual blessings. It doesn't tell us to do anything. It tells us who we are in Christ. And it's better to belong to those who are blessed in Christ than to put your hope in any other thing. And we saw these three affirmations about the blessings we have in Christ. The first, our blessings are spiritual and they're from a spiritual realm, all right? They're not necessarily physical. These are spiritual and every spiritual blessing is ours. They are for our good. Two, our blessings are rooted in the Trinity as well, rooted in Christ, but they're also rooted in Father, Son, Holy Spirit well in the past. And we're going to look at a hard saying today, that this was rooted before the foundations of the earth, something that Christ did on the cross that He's doing in us today through the Holy Spirit. And in the future, when Christ returns, justification we were, sanctification we are, becoming like Christ, and glorification in some mysterious way, we will be like Christ when He returns. For our good, past, present, future, but for whose glory? Our glory, our fame, for all for the glory of God, for His name. And finally, our blessings that we receive in Christ are the foundation of the great divide. It brings down hostility. The wall of hostility. It brings that down in our marriages. It brings it down in our fights with our vizinhos, our neighbors at work. But principally in the church. We can't control the behavior of others. But where Christ reigns, the heavenlies, the principles of heaven lived out on earth through the church. This is the great manifestation of God's mystery. He's revealing His will to the principalities and powers, to the angels, to the demons, through us, the local church, as He breaks down the great divide based in the great promises and, and, and blessings we receive in Christ. Back in 1907 in the United States, there was a, a, a crisis, a financial crisis a banking crisis, there was no more money to be invested, the railroads came to an end, and the expansion of the mines in the West came to a screeching halt. Actually, there was still gold to be made, but the landowners, the mine owners, they didn't want to pay the workers. They couldn't pay the workers. I guess they could. The, mine, the gold was coming out. So what happened? The gold... Uh, the workers, by 1917, horrible, deplorable conditions, they formed a union. And they went to the landowners and they said, we, we want more money and we want healthier working situations. It was, it was like slave labor. But the owners refused and as a result, in Arizona, they took some of those workers and deported them. So they were already poor and dying in the mines, but now they took as an example some and put them in New Mexico, which was a hard place. No work, like being um, exiled to a desert. And the miners had to decide, do we stay at the rock face, the rock, the hard rock, or the hard place? And in English, in America, we say, I'm caught between a rock in a hard place. And that's where that came from because of a crisis. What do I do? Do I stay at the rock face like a slave or do I turn to utter poverty and exile into the desert? We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Our modern day, we're experiencing various panics, crises. How many of us have felt panic attacks, anxiety? Panicu, crisi. There's financial worries, stress, health. We're worried about it. We're, the, 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 the pandemic's on a rise. We're going back into isolation. There's a lack of justice. 
more laws than ever and more, more pointing fingers among many others. And many people, even you perhaps, have felt caught between a rock and a hard place. Do I go with Crevella or do I go with Eduardo Pines? No matter, <laughs> oh, where do we turn? Do I work for meager wages or do I become exiled? To whom do we turn for hope? In the crisis, in the marriage crisis, in the work crisis, whatever crisis, where does the world turn for their hope? Unfortunately, the world is more and more turning away from Christ, the rock. Christ is known as the rock. He is a rock. And it's a formidable stone. It's a tripping stone that's caused many to fall. Do I turn to Christ? And the world today more and more is saying what? No! They reject the stone. And they reject the Word of God. The word of the rock, the word of the prophets. This church is a Bible-based church. No matter what happens in this world, one of the, one of the questions for, for Rodrigo in his ordination council was this. Rodrigo, as the world turns more and more hostile to the Bible, where will you stand if you need to stand up for what's right in the scriptures or bow to the laws of the land at what point will you go to prison? At what point will you break the law to be faithful to the word? More and more we are facing hostility. Matthew 21 says this, back in Jesus' day, have you never read in the scriptures, he said to the religious leaders, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone of, of the building. The stone the builders rejected is the cornerstone, is the foundation of the blessing. The Lord has done this. It is marvelous in our eyes. It's happening. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And anyone who, whom, on whom it falls will be crushed. Jesus is a formidable stone. And for us to come before Him in our weak state, our sinful state, it's daunting to face the holiness of Jesus. And how much more to face the Word of God and its hard teachings. The Word of God more and more just doesn't fit in our world. Caught between the rock and the hard place. In terms of hope, our society has none. Because they rejected the rock, they rejected the hard teachings of the scripture. And today I'd like to suggest to you that between the rock, the rock, Jesus, and the hard place, the very difficult teachings of scripture that we like to ignore, lies the blessing, the spiritual blessings that are being poured out. So though it may be intimidating to behold Christ, to become like Him, to obey the Word, we can rest in these spiritual blessings. Praise. Let's stand as we read this together. We're going to go through these verses that we saw last week. But let's just um, stand as I read this. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. Lord, as we face daunting days, crises after crisis, panic after panic, as we, as we, we see the world rejecting the rock, 
the word of God being disregarded, disregarded. Help us find our peace in the spiritual blessings we find as the dividing wall comes down, O oh Lord Jesus. Bring down the dividing walls. At this table, we're going to see that in the baptism, we'll see the dividing walls being destroyed, Lord Jesus. May we leave here exalting Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. What is between the rock and the hard place? Spiritual blessings that we read about. Today I'm going to share with you two hard sayings that come from the Bible. Paul has two teachings more that are very hard for us to understand and, and in many ways have divided the church. Two spiritual blessings that will comfort us in two ordinances of the Lord commands that Jesus gave the sharing of this table that brings all together who are in Christ in baptism a washing of, renew birth, of new birth in Christ hard saying number one praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ now listen to this praise be to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ Wait, praise be to the God of Jesus? Does that make sense? Who is the God of Jesus? Does Jesus have a God? I thought Jesus was God. I want to show you some references that are important for us to see. Many use this scripture to reject Christ. That he is not the rock. He is a little rock. Bigger than you and me. But not the rock. In Matthew 27, 46, we see at the death of Christ, when he was hanging on the cross, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. Remember, the, the, the earth turned dark, Jesus dying on the cross. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabakasani, which means, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Christ the man is crying out, My God, my God. Who is the God of Christ? Well, we read in Philippians, we study this in your relationships to one another. You should have the same mindset of Christ who was in his being the very nature God. He was God. did not consider equality with God something to be used in his own advantage. He didn't hold on to his rights as God, but he let go of his rights and he became submissive to the Father. He who was God became submissive to God. And for this, he says, you have become my son. Taking the very nature of a servant being found in human likeness like you and me. God became like you and me. He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. God came close. That's what the Advent is about. The coming, the first coming of Christ to fulfill the purpose of the Father on a mission. And He cried out in human form like you and me. Listen to this in John 20, 17. After he died on the cross, he was raised to life, but he was still in human form. He had holes in his body, but he ate fish. In John 20, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. Don't grab on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers. And here we believe he's not talking to his biological brothers, but his brothers, his disciples. He's calling mankind his brothers. We become brothers with Christ. We become brothers with God. I mean, it's a mystery. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, 
to my God and to your God. Does Jesus have a God? He has a God like you and I, but he doesn't say here, our Father, does he? He says, go and tell your brothers, I'm going to our Heavenly Father. He doesn't say that. He says, go and tell them that I'm going to my Father and your Father. To my God and your God. So there, he's like us. He's become human like us. He cries out to God like us. But he's also different. I'm going to my Father who is also your Father. But the only way that he is your God, he was always God, but he's my God, our God. Why? Because he is first and foremost the God of Jesus and the Father of Jesus. And now we see that although Jesus in his humanity is like us and submits to the Father, he's an example and model for our ministry. He in his humanity submits to God. We're going to see how he's very different from you and me. In John 1.14, we see that he is the only son. That he's in a unique relationship with the Father. He is the begotten Son. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. In the beginning was the Word, the truth. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. And he made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only Son. Not including us. He's the one and only Son the Father of the Father, the full of grace. Jesus is from the Father and the only way for us to the Father. And that's what this ordinance is about and that's what this ordinance is about. That's why He is the rock. And that's why people trip because he is, the, he is sent from His Father, the one and only, so that we might become adopted into the family. He is the only way to the Father. And for this, people are outraged. For this one day, they'll want to put Rodrigo and myself in prison. Because we will remain faithful and say, He was sent from the Father and He's the only way to the Father. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, the one and only so that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. In Romans 8.32, For God so loved the world that He gave His one... Oh, he did not spare, God the Father did not spare His own child, His own Son, but He gave Him up for us. Remember last week, us! Us! How will He not along with Him graciously give us all things. And what are these things? What are all things? We're not talking about all material things. He does. We're talking about all the spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing. And that brings us to spiritual blessing, number one. The forgiveness of sins and the unity of all things. This is a blessing. In Him we have redemption through His blood. And that's what this table is about. We've been redeemed. Someone, while we were prisoners, paid the price. We were kidnapped and someone paid the ransom. We saw it last night in the preaching through the wheelbarrow. Someone bears the weight, all the weight. In Him we have redemption through the blood that was spilt. We have the forgiveness of sins. In accordance with his riches, it's by God's grace. This is the gospel. He lavishes it on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put in effect, in effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity, right there, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth. This table is about the forgiveness of sins, the blood of Christ, but it's all about unity. Is it about you and the Lord? It's about us. Have you forgotten the message after one week? 
Should I not even continue? <laughs> I want one point. We only have like two points today, so that's the good news. The great wall of divide. It's about you and the Lord, but in the bigger picture, what he's doing, the mystery is, it's about us. To bring into unity all things in heaven and earth. Under Christ, the Lordship of Christ. He is the Son of Promise, the unique Son. He is the peace child. For Ephesians 2.16 says, For He Himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier. He's destroyed the great divide of hostility. Is there hostility? Is there conflict in your life? Jesus, in His blessing, the spiritual blessing, the redemption through His blood, has broken down the hostility the dividing wall, the great divide. And it's the only hope. And in one body to reconcile, to reconcile. We've been reconciled to God. We've been reconciled to one another. Both of them to God through the cross by which He put to death their hostility. And from this we get the name of the sermon series, The Death of the Great Divide, in which he put to death their hostility. We're going to take a break and celebrate now our first ordinance, the communion table. This table is often abused. People love religious ceremonies. I can only do so much for you. I'm a man. Like Jesus became man, he showed us how to live through the Spirit, but only Jesus could pay the price. It was only the blood of Jesus that makes us pure that breaks down the wall of hostility, that gives us love that we could never muster in ourselves, that makes us faithful. But look at this, the price of our freedom. The blood of God. A candle is beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? I love the unit church because they have a beautiful tree and a beautiful candle. And it is beautiful. We sing, silent night. Think of the baby. But the purpose of the baby to cry in the cold, to face rejection, to suffer, to cry out with loud tears to the one who could save him, Father. The one that cried out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? Because the Father turned his back and he took on the sins of the world, past, present, and our sin on the Son, the good Son. He bled from his forehead the sweat of angustia, anxiety. You want to know panic. You want to know fear. You want to know sorrow. The good son who never knew even a glimpse of evil. You and I don't know righteousness because we still have a veil to some form. We're veiled from God. We can't see him in his full glory. Jesus was unveiled and he took on all the sin. And this here, when you get this cup, there's part that is bread on the top and the juice that represents the blood of Christ. It's the price, he said, of the new covenant. And he pulled together those closest to him and he said, now the Old Testament you know well, but it, it brings judgment and it brings hostility. It brings the wrath of God. But I bring you in these next hours. In the next hours, he says, I bring you a new covenant. 
at a high price. My blood poured out for you the remission of sins. My body broken for you. For Christ died for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was sent from the Father. He is the only way to the Father. And I invite you to partake of this ordinance of Jesus. Do likewise until I return, remembering the high price of your ransom, of your redemption. And not only for you and you, but for you and you. For us, the church, the bride of Christ. Christ says to the man, love your wife, man, like Christ loved his bride. And presents her holy and blameless before the Father. I'm going to ask that the ushers pass this out. And if you have come to a point in your life where you trust in Jesus Christ as the one who died for your sins, the one who offers us the spiritual blessing of redemption, of forgiveness through his blood, and the only way to reconciliation with the Father. The only way to love one another completely. If you've come to that point where you bowed the knee and said, Lord, forgive me. Raise me up. Be my life, Lord. Then I invite you to take this cup and this bread with me. For on the night that Christ was crucified, He took the bread and he gave thanks and after giving thanks he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you take eat of it remembering me how deep the father's love for us how vast beyond all Likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood shed for you for the remissions of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink of it, drink in remembrance of me. Take a drink. Behold Sing to 
Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot even answer, but this I know with all. my ransom why should I gain from his reward I cannot even answer but this I know with all my heart his wounds have give you thanks for this ordinance. We thank you for the hard sayings about Jesus. We pray for our lost world that evermore rejects him as the rock, as the cornerstone of hope. We thank you for the spiritual blessings that cushions the blow of our lack of faith and uh, even our hardness. Help us to walk in the blessing, O oh Lord, of redemption and forgiveness and unity. Thank you for this table. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We're going to conclude our service with the second ordinance. We're going to skip the hard saying. We're going to come back to that next week. If you like, if you like uh, uh, jabbing, uh, we're going to talk about predestination. This is a hard saying. And we're going to talk about free will and how to reconcile God predestining, choosing before the foundation of the earth and man having responsibility to choose. We're going to skip that for now and we're going to jump right to the blessing. Fixed or free is what we'll look at. Whoop, one too many. <laughs> Are we doing this? <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> blessing number two, we find it in... Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 4, 5 in our text, 11 through 13. A new identity. When you take of this table, when you come to the cross, the blessing is not only we're forgiven, but we have a new identity in Christ. We are chosen before the foundations of the earth to be holy and blameless. Wow. There are commands to be holy, be holy as I am holy, but it's also something that is Christ is doing in us. Holy and blameless. This is our destiny to be holy and blameless and will be done through His choosing, through His predestined will. You are predestined to sonship, to a daughtership, adopted. You have a new identity. You're no longer servant. He shares with us his will. You're a daughter of the king, son of the living God. And your inheritance is guaranteed because you've been baptized by the Spirit. He takes his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and he infuses it with our spirit. And even death can't separate it. It's a, it's a down payment, a guarantee that you are with God. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says this. And you also were included. You now are included. You are us. When you heard this message preached today, the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. You were baptized. You were cleaned. You were washed. He is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. You become God's possession for the praise of His glory. You're good, but His glory. And as we now go to this ordinance of baptism, I want to share with you Titus 3, 5. 
He saved us. It's something He has done. Not because of righteous things we have done. It's not your goodness that saves you. But because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to see baptism as a command of the Lord Jesus. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because all authority has been given to Christ. He is making all things one. But we're also following Christ's example. He himself was baptized. Baptism is our outward symbol. It's something for someone to see of an inward reality. I think we have that up there for you to see. Yeah. An inward reality that you're being washed clean. You're going to see these shirts. What's a good verse for baptism? Just a drop. Washed. Lavada. Lavada, washed, I'm clean. This verse I just read, Titus 3, 5. Not because of any righteous thing you have done, but because of His mercy. Washing, washed, a rebirth, new creation, renewal by the Holy Spirit. It's an image of our death, our dying as we go into the waters. Dying to self. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but then Christ lives in me. You come up in faith, repentance, I die to self, I die daily. And then I'm raised to life in Christ, washed. We have the baptism of Joachim, Merrick's Joy, and Jazar. We like to have all of our, uh, come over here to the side. We can be seated together. As we shared, this is an ordinance of the Lord that we should baptize disciples, Christ followers, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. This does not save us. This does not bring us salvation. This is not a salving work. But there is grace in it as it is an outward reality of what Christ did in us, baptized us. And we come to this place as a testimony to you, each one, that they have received the Lord Jesus Christ as both their Lord, the leader of their life, and their Savior, the one who forgives them their sins, the one who's broken down that divide between them and God and one another, who's brought the peace. And also a testimony that this is not a one-time deal, but they die daily and for the rest of their lives, if so help them by the will of God and the Spirit, that they purpose to follow Jesus all the days of their life. And we're so honored to have uh, Reverend Rodrigo baptize his son this morning. Emotional moment. You want to help Joachim come in? <laughs> A little cold. Let's come away. <laughs> Joachim, my son. Did you receive Jesus Christ? as your Lord, the leader of your life, and as a Savior, the one who died to pay for your sins? Yeah. Are you committed to live with Him and for Him all the days of your lives? life? Yes. <laughs> My son, upon your profession of faith, in your profession that Jesus is your Lord, your Savior, and your commitment to live with Him all the days of your life, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Once for all, you die so I could live again. Once for all, you washed away our sin. Streams of mercy and love flowing free forevermore. And your Nice to have you here. Have you come to a point in your life where you have received Jesus as the Lord or leader of your life, the one you obey, and Savior, the one who forgives you your sins? Yes. Yes. Is it your desire to follow and obey Jesus, to trust in Him all the days of your life? Yes. Then, Merricks, upon your profession, in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and to follow him all the days of your life, here you go. Feels good in here, so you guys are hot out there. <clears throat> yeah, <that's good. laughs> Joy, it's been a pleasure having you here in the church. You've been part of various testimonies and helping people write their testimonies. Have you, you're a new member of the church, but we ask in front of these witnesses here today, have you come to the point where you received Jesus as both your Lord and Savior, the leader of your life, and the, your Savior, the one who forgives you for your sins? Yes, I do. Is it your purpose to follow Jesus, obeying His commands and loving Him all the days of your life? Yes, I do, Pastor. Then joy upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and purpose to follow Him all the days of your life. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Once for all, you die so I could live again. Once for all, you washed away our sin. Streams of mercy and love flowing free forevermore. And your blood. Carioca here is freezing in this pool, but it's, it's warm water. It's nice. Well, Jazar, you've been hearing the testimonies of your colleagues and sisters in Christ. And uh, Jazar had asked to give a little testimony about her life in Christ, which is recent, very recent. And because it exalts Jesus in his saving act of grace in her life, I said, beautiful. Uh, can I speak in Portuguese to my family? Yes, you may. I ok. Um, obrigada, família, por estarem aqui. Thank you, family, for being here. Mas hoje eu tenho um agradecimento mais do que especial para minha filha, Pilar. But today I have a more than special thing for my porque foi por causa do seu amor e foi tra através do seu coração puro que Deus me chamou até aqui. Your love, your heart, 
foi através da sua amizade verdadeira com a Alicia e os laços que uniram vocês duas e os laços de amizade que se expandiram para os outros membros da família. Eu entendi o chamado de Deus, eu entendi o propósito e hoje eu estou aqui para entregar a minha vida a Ele e agradecer todas as bênçãos que eu tenho na minha vida, especialmente você, minha filha, eu te amo. E você, minha filha. Thank you, Pastor. Now I know that I belong here. Ah, amen. Amen. Well, today I have the privilege of baptizing Jazar, not only as her pastor, but as good friends. And as she said, our two daughters met at the school. And we began to get to know one another because of their friendship. And it's been amazing to see what God is doing in this family's life. We see that today the testimony of the word is that Jesus is the rock. And to some households he brings peace, to others the sword. Because sometimes households are divided over who Jesus is. Some accept, some reject, and it divides. But we just really rejoice that in his household, it has brought peace. And we pray that it will continue to bring peace because Jesus is the peacemaker. Jazar, let's come over here. So we, yeah, that's good. And we're going to follow this way right here. Thank you. Okay. Jazar, have you come to the point in your life where you have received Jesus as both Lord and Savior. Lord meaning the leader of your life, the one you follow and obey, and the Savior, the one and only who can forgive your sins and lead you to the Father. Yes. Is it your purpose, Jazar, to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Then, Jazar, upon your testimony before your family and those who are here in attendance today, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father. Of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Once for all, you die so I could live again. Once for all. Yeah. 
open wide you have raised us up to life we breathe again this mystery made to a cross there in our place O Lamb of God in our offerings and then the last thing of our service we're going to call those who've been baptized they're getting changed up here give them their certificates and we'll dismiss you okay one more song as we pass the plates for our tithes and our offerings we have many visitors and so we just remind folks that our tithes and our offerings for our regular attenders and our members and it's a form of not out of um, law or force but out of grace that we received a form to give back to the Lord just a portion of of what he's given us not only in our spiritual blessings but our physical blessings então em português temos muitos visitantes hoje nosso momento de dízimo, oferta, uh, por favor, não é para vocês necessariamente participar. Uh, é para nossos membros, os que estão, participam normalmente na igreja, com uma forma de louvor, de fato. Também um símbolo, né? Uma porção do que o Senhor nos deu. Principalmente através dos bens espirituais, como redenção como nossa nova identidade, como filhos de Deus, mas também para 
os bens materiais também. Mas vamos continuar dando, não de obediência, lei, mas pela graça e alegria que Deus nos deu. Amém. E como eu estava dizendo, muitos de nós esperamos por esse período em que nós vemos alguns particulares songs. And I see them during all the year in my list of songs, in our list of songs of worship. I say, wow, man, when I'm going to sing this again? December is coming. Joy to the world, the Lord is coming. Ushers to come forward. Can we have uh, Jazar, Joy, uh, Merricks, and Joachim come up here? And then we'll give you your certificates. Amen. The wonders of your love, O oh Lord, the wonders of your love. We just proclaim that Advent, the first Advent of Christ, and the power of the cross, the resurrection. And yet, Lord, we are in anticipation of the second Advent, the return of Christ, and as we live out. In between, would you receive these gifts, our offerings of praise, that the good news of the gospel, the spiritual blessings that come in Christ might go to the ends of the earth so that every nation, every tongue, every tribe may be represented in that banquet, in that celebration. We pray this to your glory. Amen. And as we uh, present this, if the parents would like to come forward, you may. Hosanna, if you want to come forward here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, you guys, hey, you good? Merricks, you guys can open it. Joy and Jazar, yes. Take those out. Maybe we get someone here. Oh, we got cameras. All right, you can share this in the in the group. Excellent. Where are um, how about? This is about community, us. Where's some ladies from the ladies group? We have these ladies here. Or if a family member wants to come up, família pode. Membro de grupo de mulheres, por favor. Essa aí. Acompanhe. Ninguém sozinho aqui. Tem família de sangue, família de fé. Okay? Let's take a picture of our baptizes. All right. And I'll send us out as a church from here. Excellent. All right. Wonderful. Oh, God, it's come. Great. What an exciting moment in Christ. Caught between a rock, the rock, and the hard place. The foundation of our faith, the author, finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ and His Word. May you go, church, out today in the blessing, the spiritual blessing of redemption, of forgiveness lavished upon you as sons and daughters, washed, washed clean in Christ. You're dismissed. He rules the world with truth and